Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, welcome to our Thursday edition of uh, uh, Woodcraft uh, demo. Uh, today we're going to be talking about white side router bits and white side router bit basics. Um, I know a lot of people out there, a lot of people that come into the store here uh, always have questions about router bits, whether they be new into it um, or just don't have a lot of experience into it. Um, kind of want to go over what router bits are, uh, what makes a good router bit, and then different types of router bits. And hopefully in that uh, as well, kind of, if you came in and asked, what are some basic router bits to get? These are gonna be my suggestions. Um, if any time you have any questions, please uh, type them in. Joel will relay them to me and we will try and get those answered. Um, so without further ado here, um, so router bits. Of course, they go into a router. Uh, they have they have a cutting edge on there. This might be a little difficult to see, as these white side bits come. Most of them come with a wax coating on there, uh, but they're made out of uh, good machine or uh, tool steel, and then they're going to have a very good quality router bit. Is going to have a uh, carbide cutter on there. Most of them uh, are a two cutter. So this is a, what they refer to as a two flute. So there's a cutter on this side and there's a cutter on this side. Um, lesser quality router bits are made out of high-speed steel. They're gonna be just high-speed steel on the cutting edge, um, not quite as nice as these carbide-tipped ones, okay? Uh, so be on the lookout for that. White side are fantastic. I've been using these guys for many, many years. Um, they're gonna come in two different shank sizes. So if you came in the store, or called us on the phone, and said, I'm looking for a router bit, we're gonna ask you a couple a couple questions. Um, what kind of bit are you looking for? And uh, what shank size are you looking for? And those shank size are fairly common in, in America here, are quarter inch and, so they're pretty open to everything, but it's not coming out, and half inch, okay? Um, both of them work, can you see that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, both of them work just fine. My recommendation is to go to half inch if you have the ability to run half inch shanks in your routers. Not all routers have that ability, uh, but most modern large routers, uh, full size routers, are going to have the ability to do half or quarter. I'm going to suggest half inch. Quarter are fine if you're going to be doing smaller, uh, smaller profiles, edge treatments, that sort of thing, and I'll, I'll, we'll talk about those here shortly. Uh, but for most part, for reduced vibration, um, and less chance of any other issues, half inch shank is preferable, okay? So if you don't have a router that has a half inch shank, um, small laminate trim routers, um, compact routers, and some of the older uh, craftsmen and skills, uh, they just ran quarter inch shank, and that's fine. You just gotta be more careful with uh, with that bit, not trying to bury the whole thing in there at one time and, and making it cut, okay? Um, rule of thumb when, when uh, routing is never go more than half the diameter. So this one here is a quarter inch, no, excuse me, this is a 5 16 diameter bit. So whether you're taking cutting from the edge or from the end, this one no more than 5 30 seconds uh, depth of cut at a time, and that will save your bit and less likely to destroy it or tear out any sort of wood that you're working on. If you have a router that only has a half inch collet, um, I know the, uh, the Porter Cable 7518, it only came with a half inch collet. Um, that's a three and a quarter horsepower router motor. So there's a lot of beef, a lot of torque behind that bit. Um, so it's really only recommended to run half inch router bits in there. Um, you can run quarter in there as long as you're very, very careful with them. You can do one of two things. Uh, quarter cable does sell a quarter inch collet for that. Um, it will adapt to that. I think their collets are the same from the 690 up through their whole series there. Or you can get a collet adapter. So this one happens to be a half inch outside diameter. So it'll fit into your half inch collet and reduce it to a quarter inch shank size. Okay, there's other ones for other sizes. This is most common to go from half to quarter. Um, another common size is 
half to eight millimeter. Most of our router bits we're gonna have here are half or quarter inch shank. The eight millimeter typically is going to pertain to um, an eight millimeter shank on, on a dovetail bit. And I'll talk more about dovetail bits maybe in a little bit here, but a lot of uh, dovetail jigs, um, the lead especially, they use eight millimeter shank. So if you don't want, if you want to use the bits they come with, you'll have to get a collet reducer from half to eight millimeter. Uh, a lot of these dovetail bits are also available in quarter inch shank and half inch shank. But just in case, call it reducer for that. All right. So I've got those two sizes. Now we're going to talk about a slew of different router bits. Um, and then I'll, I'll reiterate them as far as what I feel are the most, uh, if you came in looking for a few to do just about any project, kind of my recommendations there. Um, going to start out with uh, straight cut bits. Nothing fancy. These first two I showed you here, these are both straight cut. This is a quarter inch shank, 5 16 cut diameter, um, one inch cutting length. So the cutting length is going to be the length of the carbide that is on there. Um, this is a half inch uh, shank. This is a three quarter inch cutting diameter and a one inch uh, cutting length on there. These are really great for doing dados and grooves. Um, pretty much what they're used for, uh, coupled with a bushing, which I'm not going to get too far into. Um, a bushing is just another way of uh, routing to a template. Uh, these can be in conjunction with that to do template routing. And kind of on the specialty side is this little set here. Uh, these come. These ones happen to be on a half inch shank. Um, they are straight cut router bits, but they are actually undersized plywood dado bits. Uh, plywood is not, if it says half inch, it's not actually half inch, it's slightly undersized. So they make some specialty bits here so that you can do a dado or a rabbit with them and you can match up a half inch plywood to half inch plywood or half inch to quarter into that groove and it's gonna fit snugly. If you try to do a quarter inch, um, if you use a quarter inch, standard quarter inch freight bit and try to do a groove or a dado with that and put a piece of plywood in there, it's gonna be sloppy. So these underside plywood bits um, come individually or in a pack like this to do quarter inch, half inch, and three quarter inch plywood. Uh, moving on from there, uh, rabbiting bits. So a rabbiting bit is gonna be used to cut a, an edge or a shoulder, a square shoulder onto the edge of a board. Um, they are more or less a straight cut bit. They're typically not very tall. Um, and then they have a bearing on there, and the ball bearing is going to reference off the edge. Um, you can buy these individually. This one is actually set for a 3 8 inch depth, so from the bearing to the outside of the cutter is 3 8 of an inch. And then it is half inch uh, height on there. Um, so you can, you can change the height uh, just by moving the bit up and down in your router. Um, and then this is fixed at 3 8 if this works for what you're doing, that's great. Uh, later on, if you needed to change the depth of cut from the bearing to the outside edge, you can actually change the bearing on there. Uh, bearings aren't very expensive. We, uh, Whiteside does sell several different sizes, so you can effectively change uh, the size of rabbit you're doing. Uh, more, more likely, you're gonna need to have the choice of doing many different size rabbits. Um, this is a white side rabbiting bit set on a quarter inch shank. They make the same thing on a half inch shank. So you're basically getting the same router bit with a whole bunch of bearings. And this will do uh, flush trim and then it goes from 8, 3 16 quarter, 5 16 3 8, 7 16 and half inch. And that is that distance that it's going to leave from the bearing to the outside edge of the cutter. Very handy to have. Uh, a rabbiting bit set. Uh, then we move on to uh, straight bits with bearings on them, sometimes called flush trim bits, sometimes called pattern bits. I grabbed two that have the same exact uh, dimensions. So they're the same, they're both on a quarter inch shank. They're both half inch diameter. 
on the cutter and they both have a bearing on there. Uh, that bearing is a half inch outside diameter which matches the size of the diameter of the cutter, uh, which makes it a flush trim. They are this practically the same bit. They just do the same thing in two different ways. Um, take a moment to call this, uh, to, to show the difference between a pattern bit and a flush trim bit. Um, this way I'm holding them uh, kind of represents how they're going to be in the router. A pattern bit is this one here. It's also called a top bearing. The bearing is on the top of the cutter. It's on the shank of the cutter. So if you said you wanted a pattern bit, this is what we're going to probably grab for you. Uh, and or you say you want a top bearing. This is what it means. It's on the top of the cutter when it's installed in your router. This is a flush trim bit. Um, it's going to have the bearing on the cutter end or called a bottom bearing because it's now it's on the bottom. And this is really great if you have a uh, piece of laminate uh, or trim around the edge of a counter and you want to cut it flush to the edge of the counter. That's a flush trim bit. Essentially, they do the, they do the same thing. Um, if you have them in a router table upside down like this, so they're, they're poking up, uh, they both do the same thing with a pattern. Just depends. You want your pattern on top, you want it on bottom. Do the same exact thing. So uh, pattern bit, flush trim bit, pattern bit, bearing on the shank, top bearing, flush trim bit, pattern on the cutter end, bottom bearing. Okay? Flush trim pattern. Uh, you can get the same thing in a half inch shank. Now, half inch shank, this is a half inch cut diameter on here. It is much longer. This is a flush trim bit because the bearing is a bottom bearing. It is on the cutter end here. Um, you can't do a half inch cutter on a half inch shank and make it a pattern bit. There's no place for the bearing to be. So if you need to have a larger, or you want to have that half inch shank, um, you have to, as a pattern bit, you have to go to something much, much larger. So we've gone from an inch and a half, or excuse me, a half inch cut diameter to an inch and an eighth. On a half inch shank, that larger cutter allows you to have a larger bearing, be flush trim, and of course, the, or a flush cutting, and that is a pattern bit massive bit right there. I wouldn't recommend this in anything smaller than a two and a quarter horsepower router either. Could you do it on something like a one and three quarter? Probably just be very careful with it. All right, uh, moving on here, we have uh, chamfer bits. This is a great bit to have in your, in your kit. I just happened to grab one on a quarter inch shank. These are all available in half inch shank as well. Uh, chamfer bit. Uh, a lot of times it's going to be a 45 degree cut on there. It could be 60 degree, 30 degree, 15, whatever. There's a whole bunch of different ones. 45 is very common. And then they're going to have a guide bearing on there. So as you're going around the edge uh, of your piece of wood, it's going to, whatever the edge shape is, uh, it's going to transfer that uh, to a 45 degree on there. And I did grab a quarter inch shank also because these are fine in small trim routers. They're fine in compact routers and small routers for doing edge treatments. So that works perfectly fine. You're typically not taking off a whole bunch of material at one time. Uh, so a quarter inch shank is plenty fine on there. Um, then we're going to get into edge forming bits. There's all, I grabbed several uh, just to show you here. Uh, this one is kind of fancy. This is an OG bit. I don't know, can you see that okay there? Mm -hmm. uh, so this has some sort of S-shaped curve to it. So it's gonna put this whole profile on the edge of a piece. Very, very fancy. Can be used for cabinet doors, tabletops, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, the next one that's very, very common, well, excuse me, the next one that's very, very common is a round over bit. So instead of doing just a flat bevel, this has a curve in there. Um, this is pretty cool. You can do it so you just have a little radius corner uh, or edge, and then you can bury it down in there a little bit further because you have a little bit of a cutter right here that gives you a little shoulder on it. So you have a nice square shoulder and then a round over, um, kind of considered a beading bit. You can also take this bearing and get one that's slightly smaller 
and you can do turn this into an actual beading bit, a corner beading bit, to where you have a little shoulder here and on the top with the little round over in the center. And again, these are typically fairly small. Uh, people just want to ease the corner over. They don't want it round or uh, flat. They want it rounded. Um, so these are fine and small compact routers. Moving on here, the exactly opposite of that is a cove bit. So instead of putting a round, uh, convex round over, this is a concave uh, round over. Um, just different things depending on what you want to do. So cove bits. And then this one. Um, and I'm going to show you the picture because it's kind of complicated looking. This is a full beading bit. And depending on how far out of the router or how much of the router table it's poking up, um, can give you a couple different po profiles there for beating not the corner of your top, but the actual edge of your top. So if you look straight on, you would have a bead on there. Um, and these, they make really, really small ones um, that might be okay on a quarter inch shank, but highly recommend a half inch shank for those guys there. Um, some more specialty kind of shaping things, uh, router bits. This is a raised panel bit. I grabbed this one because it is an OG, so it has that nice curved feature on there. Uh, this is actually for cabinet making. I would suggest a larger router, two and a quarter inch, or excuse me, two and a quarter horsepower or larger to run these and in a table. Uh, very difficult to do this uh, freehand. Uh, but this gives you a nice profile on the panel of a door and relieves the edge down so that it can fit into the groove of your rail and styles, okay? And speaking of rail and style, uh, right over here, uh, this is a rail and style bit set. Again, I highly recommend a three and a quarter horsepower router motor. Um, these are only coming on a half inch shank. It's a lot of bit to be spinning around um, a fence, a coping sled, uh, or a miter gauge with the, with the fence on it um, are pretty much mandatory to run these guys. But this gives you, if you can kind of see on the front there, your one is, and Stoll's gonna zoom in there, right down here. One of these cutters is going to be um, your stick and the other one is gonna be your cope. And the cope is just the end cut, uh, where the two pieces are gonna butt together in the corners. Not 45, but butt together. Um, so it's going to give you kind of a tongue and groove with a fancy profile on there that if you use your raised panel bit, you can cut and place your raised panel bit into that same groove that that guy makes. Okay, I'm going to set that down and go to another specialty one talking about that. And that is a tongue and groove. So this is just a straight uh, flat tongue and groove, no fancy profile. I've got two versions here. Um, this guy in the package is a single piece. So you have a bearing in the middle and two cutters. This, how it's set up, will cut you a tongue. So it's going to cut away the wood on the top and bottom of the board and leave a tongue in the center. And then uh, you can either, well, you're probably going to have to take off one of these cutters and you'll still leave the bearing on there. And you can center this on your board and cut the groove for the matching tongue. So single piece, this is the basically the same thing, but in a two piece set. Um, so the double cutter is gonna cut your tongue, the single cutter is gonna cut your groove with no need to swap out, uh, to, or take any cutters off or swap out bearings or anything like that. So a two piece set, tongue and groove, this can be used for cabinet making, joining board edges, things like that. All right, so now we're gonna talk about, well, while well, we're still talking about specialty bits, um, these dovetail bits, these are typically used in conjunction with a dovetail jig, uh, but there are many other things you can do with them, cutting dovetail slots and ways uh, for specialty jigs and clamping and things like that. Uh, we have a wide variety of these in the eight millimeter quarter inch and half inch shanks. This is kind of a smaller one uh, we have larger ones. This happens to be a half inch diameter and a half inch cutting length um, and 14 degrees. So this edge here uh, kicks out at 14 degrees. Got a cabinet full of those. 
Um, and now I kind of want to talk about spiral bits. They land um, in two categories, straight cut and flush trim. Um, anywhere you can use a straight cut bit, you can use a spiral bit. Uh, you're a little more limited on uh, diameter of cutter. Um, they typically come in a quarter inch shank, anything from about eighth inch or sixteenth inch on up to quarter inch in diameter. The biggest, besides the, the way they're cut, which I'll talk about here in a sec, um, the biggest difference between this and this is this is a piece of tool steel with carbide uh, brazed onto it. These spiral bits are solid carbide. Um, you can get some high speed steel ones. I don't recommend them. Um, I would go for the solid carbide. They are a bit more expensive, but I feel well worth the extra money. Um, as you can see where you have a straight bit like this, you have cutters on the opposite side. This is more of a scraping action. This one, the spiral bits, look a lot like a twist drill bit. Um, as they, the cutter spirals around, um, it's making contact pretty much everywhere at the same time. Um, the cutting edge is spread out over a bigger, larger surface, so it reduces vibration and virtually eliminates tear out. So anywhere you can use a straight bit for, for dados, um, or if you're gonna uh, use this with a bushing, it's gonna give you a much, much cleaner cut. Now, they come in not only uh, two different shank sizes, I'll show you some half inch here in a moment, uh, they also come in an up cut and a down cut. And what that means is the direction in which um, the flute is cut on there, so I'm gonna hold, in my left hand is an up cut, in my right hand is a down cut. Now I'm gonna flip them over because that ref refers to that up cut and down cut in conjunction with how they're mounted in your router. Uh, the one in my left hand, this one here, is an up cut. And what that means is when it's mounted in the router, it's gonna pull chips up towards the router. Okay, so if you were to flip that over into a router table, it's still an up cut, because, but it's pulling the chips down to the router. So chips always to the, in the direction of the router on an up cut. The one next to it here is the same thing. Uh, one inch cut length, quarter inch cut diameter, quarter inch shank, but it is a down cut. So it's pushing the chips away from the router, okay? How does that help you? If uh, the up cut is gonna give you a cleaner bottom channel, uh, and it's going to clear those chips out of that channel as it cuts. The down cut is going to give you a cleaner uh, top cut, top edge on there. Okay, You probably won't notice much difference to begin with. As they get a little dull, you might see some feathering. Uh, but if you need, if you have a veneered uh, top, uh, like a piece of plywood that you're uh, putting a dado or inlay or something into, the down cut is going to give you a cleaner top edge. Uh, if you're not worried about that, it's wearing solid wood the up cut is gonna clear those chips out so there's less likely uh, of heat buildup in there. Okay, uh, up and down. I have those also in half inch cut, cut uh, diameter, half inch shank. That is that guy there, that is a big one. Um, this is a down cut. So it's going to be pushing down on uh, on the top edge there, pushing the chips down away from the router. Okay. Um, now the next is the flush trim. Um, where did I just put that right here? So this is one of my favorite bits for doing patterns, uh, making templates, that sort of thing. This comes in both an up and down cut. This is a quarter inch spiral flush trim, and you can see right here on the end that it has two little tiny bearings on it. Um, I use this for templates all the time. You can use it as a true flush trim to cut an edge, uh, like a veneer up to the edge of your, your project, um, just like that. This thing cuts so clean and smooth. Um, it cuts through plywood and MDF, which I use for templates all the time, very, very well. 
It is much more expensive than a standard uh, flush trim bit, but I feel well worth it because there's little to no chatter and zero, just about zero chance of tear out with it. Absolutely love it. If you're gonna do a flush trim bit, um, well, you can do a flush trim bit in the half inch shank. <clears throat> Again, like before, you can't put a half inch bearing on a half inch shank, so it has to be on the cutter end, which is that bottom bearing. So that's a nice, same thing as the other one, just half inch in diameter, double bearings on there. These ones are actually replaceable as they have a nut uh, on the end of it. The other ones are pressed on, uh, so they would not be replaceable on the bearings. Okay, uh, great, great fit. Now, if you want to do a half inch shank spiral pattern bit, you have to break out the, the big bucks for this guy as you have to have a much larger diameter. Um, this is a 7 8 inch cut diameter uh, uh, pattern bit. So you have the bearing on the shank, that top bearing. That is just a mean aggressive bit. Uh, it's going to clear out wood quickly uh, and leave a very, very nice clean surface on there. A lot more money, but if you're doing a lot of pattern cutting, this does not hurt. Uh, this will stay sharp a long time and leave you with such a clean surface. Uh, so there is that guy. Do we have any questions out there in Facebook land? Does Mr. Joel behind the camera have any questions? Not at this time. Not at this time. All right. So my... In conclusion here, um, if, if I were you, if you were coming in and said, uh, I'd like to get a few basic router bits um, to, to kind of start with, if you didn't know what you wanted to do, I would start out with uh, one or two straight bits. Uh, if you know you're gonna be doing plywood, I would go ahead and get the uh, plywood uh, dado set, undersized dado set here. I would probably grab a rabbiting bit set. I would grab at least maybe one of each, one flush trim and one uh, pattern bit. And again, any of these, if you can get them in half inch shank for your router, I would definitely do that over the quarter inch shank, unless you were getting into edge treatment. Um, these, no matter what, can be quarter inch if you're just doing small. So I'd probably grab a chamfer bit and a round over bit. Probably wouldn't do the cove, not too often I do that, but a chamfer and a roundover uh, are fantastic. Um, and that's probably where I would be. Straight, flush trim, pattern bit, rabbiting bit set, a chamfer bit, and a uh, roundover bit. Those would be very universal for a lot of different, uh, a lot of different projects. Sometimes uh, we can get kits, pre-made kits with uh, several router bits in there. Uh, one that has about six to eight router bits, you're probably gonna use most of them. The really big kits, they are available, but there's a lot of bits in those I typically don't use all that often. Um, and then if you had a specific project in mind, again, just ask us. We probably have a bit that'll suit you, whether you're doing cabinets, uh, tables, um, whatever, we probably have a bit for you. Oh, I almost forgot, uh, CNC bits. Um, this is kind of diverging a little bit from router bit basics, but I know a lot of people out there um, are thinking about or have recently purchased a CNC machine. Um, so I did happen to grab uh, some CNC bits here. Um, any, any router bit, uh, any straight cut, um, router bit, any spiral bit, any of those are going to work in your CNC machine. Uh, when you see CNC bits, and we have several of these uh, different starter sets, uh, any of the straight cutting bits are going to be spiral um, typically, and I would highly recommend those in, in a uh, CNC machine. This is CNC carving starter set 705 from Whiteside. This has a 16th inch conical ball nose um, spiral bit. It has an eighth inch conical ball nose spiral bit. Uh, those are typically used for kind of shaping and detail work. 
It also has a quarter inch up spiral bit, which is pretty much, that's the down, pretty much the same exact bit here comes in this kit, okay? And then it has a couple of V bits. It has a 90 degree V and a 60 degree V. And those are typically used for lettering um, and that sort of thing. So these are really, really nice to start out with. Uh, we have, like I said, we have a few different ones. If you're not sure if you're gonna be doing signs or if you're gonna be doing 3D carving, uh, this is kind of a middle of the road, we'll do both. We have other kits that are specialized, one in the other. Uh, the other two bits I grabbed here are called spoil board bits. Now, these are pretty necessary uh, for CNC machines. You typically um, have a, an aluminum extruded bed on there. Um, and then you want to take a piece of MDF and secure it down. And then that has to be flattened. Uh, so for the larger machines, uh, larger routers, this is a half inch shank uh, four cutter spoil board bit. And really what that means is this is used for flattening that board so that it's in parallel with the, uh, the X and Y axis. If you have a smaller machine, here's a little guy, three cutter uh, spoil board bit for a quarter inch shank, does the same thing. Um, these are also great for those out there that come in and say, I'm doing live edge slabs and I need to flatten this guy out. We have other bits, uh, straight cut bits that are very large in diameter. I think we're upwards of one and a half, one and three quarter inches in diameter. And those are typically quite long bits. And that is a lot of steel to be swinging around, especially when you're only using the end of it. So this bit here also works. Uh, with flattening jigs to flatten out um, lar large live edge slabs or other large pieces that you can't fit through your, uh, your drum sander or planer. Uh, you can make a, a sled that will run one of these guys for flattening. I think that pretty much sums it up. Again, when you come in, uh, we're gonna ask you a couple questions. Uh, what shank size uh, router bit uh, can you run or do you prefer? Um, again, I suggest half inch when you can. Um, and then if you're asking for a bearing, uh, top bearing is gonna be on the shank. Bottom bearing is gonna be on the cutter end. Um, and then we may ask you, uh, you know, what kind of project you're working on. You cutting dados for plywood or hardwood? Uh, a few simple questions. Uh, anyways, my name's Mark. Come see us at Woodcraft.